Real quick, we're going to go through the installation procedures for DC Print card issuance software. We're running the data card 150i, the data card 220, 275, 285, 295, 430, and the 450 embossing and card personaliza personalization systems. The software is uh, going to be compatible with systems running Windows XP, Vista 7, 8, 8.1, or 10. Now, we do recommend that if you are going to install the DC Print, first do all of the system updates. Run uh, Windows Update until all of your updates are done and then try, uh, turn off your automatic updates. And just because sometimes updates will mess with software and uh, somehow it will kill its activation and do things. We have division two, uh, version 2.35 and version 2.45. There's only one difference. Version 2.35 is built on the Microsoft.NET 3.5 framework and version 2.45 is built on the Microsoft.NET framework 4.5. The code and the software, the functions and the features are identical other than that, but because we wanted to maintain broad compatibility so that you could run your Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7, 8, 8.1, or 10, and moving forward, um, when the Microsoft decided to no longer support Windows XP and soon to be Vista, they stopped developing um, support or installer for the version 4.5 on Windows XP, so you could only take that up to version 4. What we have is the version 3.5, which will run on the uh, on the Windows XP system and the Vista system and the 7 system. It will also run on 8, 8.1, and it will also run on 10. But the difference is, is it will require you most likely to download the .NET 3.5 framework, uh, which is just going to be an additional step in time. So if you're running 8, 8.1, or 10, we do recommend going ahead and using the version 2.45 which will give you the same software, functions, and features, stability and compatibility overall, but you won't have to download anything. So let me go ahead real quick and show you what happens when I install a system that does not have the .NET 3.5 framework. Okay, so here's the installer, and on all of our installers, it'll welcome you. It will show you that this is the DC Print 150i version 2.35. Again, uh, 3.5 is not a newer version than 0.245 other than it's a uh, 4.5 is the newer .NET framework. So we're going to go ahead hit next through this. Uh, we suggest you just leave everything on the defaults. Um, it will go ahead and create desktop icons, quick launch icons. If you don't want those you can turn them off but we recommend just leaving it alone. Okay, uh, at the end it's going to default with a checkbox here to start DC print and I'm going to go ahead and do that so that we can show you um, what happens at that point. So I'm going to hit finish. Windows uh, pulls this up and lets you know that it needs to install .NET Framework 3.5 and this does come from Microsoft not from us and wants your permission to download and install this feature. So if I click on this and install the feature um, and I'll go ahead and do that. It's going to search, go to Windows Online if you're, you're connected to the internet. It's going to download the required files. You'll notice this is a Windows feature, so this is not anything that we are installing. This is uh, Windows requiring to install the uh, Microsoft.NET 3.5 framework. All right, so it says the following feature was successfully installed. Now, if it says it was not successfully installed, uh, you need to check your connection or take a look at uh, what's going on with it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit close on this. And now that I have that feature, I can run the software. So I'll come up and double click the DC print icon. Instead of getting the required features, I now get the activation window. We do suggest that you first activate in demo. Okay, the reason you want to use demo first is to test the software on your computer to make sure that you get good connectivity and function to your data card. But once you go into the demo version, look right here, you'll see in the bottom right hand side that it does say demo version. First thing you got to do is go into your settings and tell it where to communicate with your computer, which is your COM port. Your COM port is what connects to the serial port. Now notice here, I have no selections. And I did this on purpose so that you see I have not yet plugged in my uh, USB to serial port, which I will do now. So I'm going to cancel that. And I'm going to plug this in. Let me see here. So you'll see right now it's installing devices. 
and you may end up needing to have that disk that came with your USB adapter to go in and manually say install the drivers for this USB device from this manufactured disk um, so you don't have to wait for this or on occasion some brands will install generic drivers that don't work and that's a big problem finish the installation of the driver so it's done so I do have it set up and the way you'll know if it did or it didn't is you'll come into settings again and all of a sudden there you go voila COM3 shows up something to understand is normally if you have a built-in serial port like on some of the laptops you plug it right into the back of the system and uh, you don't have to do that and it will usually come up like with as a COM1 when you use a USB adapter normally it'll be COM3, 4, 5, 6 so now what we need to do is generally you leave everything else alone um, you don't need to adjust anything else just tell it which COM port and hit save now there are sometimes uh, if you're not using the brand the TrendNet brand that we recommended is that these COM ports appear to be functioning but then they're not really those generic drivers aren't working so if I come back into settings and it's still there and I don't have to select it again but it still shows up if I come back and this was blank again then that means it did not save which means that there's probably something wrong with that COM port or that that adapter but in this case it works so that gives me a certain level of comfort down at the bottom left hand side you'll see status and status is waiting for connection okay so to look at the top uh, left side there's a connect button so if we just connect like so you'll see this little lightning sign on it and since we have properly set the COM port in settings we now have a status that says ready for data card command ready just means it now has an active connection and we can now send commands to it